Now the question is, how can we push back against our limited awareness to receive more of what's being transmitted to us by creation and thus help know our place in it better and live more fully and meaningfully? Well, through prayer and meditation, certainly. Though, if everybody stayed home and communed privately in their rooms, I'm not sure we'd have a better world. By widening our circle of compassion through loving kindness to every person and a reverence and care for all of the living world in which we're a part, maybe. These are, of course, principles that we hold as part of our Unitarian tradition. But even in reaffirming these principles, maybe we're missing something like, well, like the radio waves, which are right in front of us at this very moment that we may just miss. I'm referring to the communal act of worship that we are now engaged in. In collective worship, I at least experience something qualitatively different than I do alone. To worship together, as we are now, is to take all these individual receivers and put them close to each other in a room of kindred minds. And when we do, our capacity for reception is amplified. In worship, we are greater than the sum of each of us. And the minister, like that crystal diode, in worship merely focuses what we all experience and renders it intelligible. Worshiping in community, then, too, is how things work. Now, I was not born or reared to this faith, but discovered as a mature adult that this church, this broadest of churches, allows for the widest capture of frequencies and thus the most comprehensive range of religious sensibility. For even now, the universe or God or what you will is broadcasting to us, in us, through us, through these words and the tone that shapes them, through the thoughts and the feelings that drive them, through this flesh that embodies them in this time and space, and also through the ideas themselves that ripple through the 40 or so of us here in this room with strangers, acquaintances, friends, intimates, all of whom receive and transmit 24-7. Through the stones of this church and the plot of the turning world upon which it rests, and through the forces that turn this planet and the other stars, all connected as we profess, could we but perceive that connection and live in it every day. An old Yankee hymn says, Blessed be the ties that bind. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. The fellowship of kindred minds we experience in our worship is the closest thing to a heaven I think we may ever know and helps open our narrow individual experience up to the sacred. Sitting in this room together in kindred sympathy, listening, engaging in this act of worship in the very present tenseness of it, our experience of life can enlarge significantly through worship, shared, public, made of what comes to hand, like my father's crystal set, a kind of alchemy, transforming, for a time, mere people and places and objects. In a shrinking world, in a century where new communication technologies, virtual worlds, and postmodern sensibilities seem evidence of a new phase of human evolution about to be born, it is our faith that is best placed, I think, through its broad capture of human experience, to tune in to the booming polyphony creation broadcasts through us and in us and all around us every second of every day of our one human life. My father, of course, would be surprised to hear all that. And I'm pretty sure, of course, that my father purposed none of these notions when he purposed the making of the crystal set. All he purposed, really, was love love for me, a desire to enlarge the scope of my experience. Love, too, is how things work. It completes the circuit between us and the universe. Not a bad pastoral model, come to think of it, trying to encourage others to tune in regularly on as many frequencies as you can. And though he wasn't bright about 
big grand notions, he was right about one thing, my dad. It definitely taught me about the way things work. <laughs>